Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. I'm the creator of the Divi Assistant plugin, and today we have a huge update I'm announcing, and there's just lots and lots of new features and improvements. Plus, we're going to cover everything that happened since the initial release. So we are bumping this version to 1.1, and then we'll just cover any new features and improvements also since 1.0. So it's kind of a big update, a very important thing. Um, to keep up to date on what all is new as this plugin is actually really rapidly expanding. Um, we are up to 112 main features at the time of this video and that's going to keep growing and growing. All right, let's get into the details. All right, I'll just have everything listed out here in the blog post. That'll be linked in the video. Basically, we are going to just have screenshots and a little, de little description for each like important improvement or new feature. So there will be other like bug fixes and stuff that I'm not mentioning. You can check the change log for that. So I will try to go fast. There is a long list, um, but yeah, hopefully um, to you, it's worth seeing all the new features. So let's just go down through. I don't know if I'll be able to like jump back and forth to an actual demo or just show you the screenshots. I'll probably end up just showing you the screenshots. Um, just to keep it simpler. All right, so number one, now we added a new option to the dashboard. Basically, before your site is live, you know, there's that little checkbox in the WordPress settings. Discourage search engines from indexing the site. And I had a website that I wanted it to be live, and I forgot to uncheck that setting. And that really frustrated me. And so as soon as that happened, I said, I don't want this to happen to anyone else. I'm adding this feature to Divi Assistant. So there you go. If that is checked and whether or not you want it to be, it's going to alert you. So you're going to see a warning about that. So um, we also added a new startup helper action, remove default widgets. So someone requested that basically from the footer and sidebar, it's going to remove those widgets that the Divi theme puts there by default. Um, another thing that was actually added a while back, but um, when you use the child theme generator, it now creates a scripts.js file in addition to the functions.php installed at CSS. So that's, an, that's been, I don't know which version that was, but it's been out a little while. We added descriptive error prompts. Like originally when you were creating a child theme, it was kind of generic, like fill in the fields. Now it tells you which field is needed. Um, we added a thumbnail preview and file name that was not there originally. And then we also added like when you save, you'll see like the green check mark and we'll get to that later. And the maintenance helper, this was also added a while back, but um, the option to bypass the coming soon mode, like if you're sharing with another colleague or someone who's working with you or needs to review the site, you can actually just copy this link. And when you have coming soon mode enabled, they can just see the site like normal. So it's really cool. And then this handy feature, you can now go and immediately edit a library layout or page that you have selected for coming soon mode or like maintenance mode. Um, and there'll be other things coming that will have a similar button. All right, in the utility helper, we've added a setting to completely disable the Divi AI. That includes from, you know, the Divi modules in the visual builder and also in the role editor. Here's a, little feature to remove howdy from the admin bar, you know, WordPress says howdy, Nelson Miller, howdy username, you can remove that. Uh, also adds these like um, a link to the Divi marketplace when you're in the add new module screen and you may not want that, you may not want your clients to see that, whatever. So we added a button to remove that. We also added an option to swap the position of the saved and global buttons or links there in the visual builder. So in every color picker, this was also a feature request. It's not possible at this point to, to make global active by default. That was kind of the intent of the feature request, but would, that's, that would require JavaScript loading and we don't want to do that. Um, probably in the future, we'll look into that. All right. Uh, so now you can also override your default environment. That's important because you can have the little environment badge, that is also a feature. So it's kind of just like a, like a extra feature so that some hosting environments are not properly, you know, specifying the environment. 
And so that's why um, it was saying the wrong thing because it wasn't there. Some of them don't correctly say that. Now you can just manually say it. Here's a really cool feature. So, you know, when you're working on a page or a post and you have a theme builder template applied to it, maybe even just the header or the footer, um, whatever it is, now it will tell you the name. Um, it'll tell you the name of the template as a whole, but it will also say like header template. And here it says global header, body template, none, um, footer template disabled. So it'll say things like that, you know, whatever the state is or like the name of it. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that because now you can just see that at a glance from your admin bar. Um, pretty, pretty handy feature. Um, and then, yeah, you can obviously know if you should jump into that edit, uh, theme builder template to edit it or whatever. Um, next is just um, an update to, we already had an option to enable SVG uploads. What we've done is something that no one has ever done in WordPress. Um, we created an innovative solution for temporarily enabling the SVG upload. It's pretty cool. So for this, let me grab, let me go over here. In the media helper SVG upload, we added this drop down. So you used to be able to just like enable that. Now there is a drop down. So it's kind of important. Um, the first option is enable by default and it's just allow. So that's kind of like if this is on, you're allowing it. Makes sense. If you don't want it allowed, you don't want to be able to upload SVGs, turn it off, you know? And it's again, for security reasons. And so that's, this first option is like default how it used to be, but there's a new one. Require confirmation button when uploading to temporarily allow. I'm trying to say that shorter. And I, <laughs> so if you save that, um, notice the green check mark when we save now, that was, that's new. Anyway, <laughs> now like, let's say I go to like media library, add a new file. You get this button here, temporarily allow SVG upload. That's added by Divi Assistant. If I'm in here and I say upload, see this button? Same thing if you're going from the Divi Builder. So I can click this and then see how it says temporarily SVG upload permission enabled. Now I can click here and go pick a file, you know, and it will allow it. And as soon as it uploads, it's going to um, like disable it. It's going to turn it back off. So pretty Pretty interesting. Um, I'm sure someone's going to copy us, but you know, that's about the safest way you can do it. Yeah. So I talked about that. Uh, the media helper notice like even, even here on my blog post, see how that, um, tool tip appears. See that, um, that serves no purpose whatsoever. It does not serve an SEO purpose. I guess I'm not sure what it's not. Um, as far as I know, I looked into it. It's not even an accessibility issue. It, just, it can just be removed. So we added a setting that you can simply remove that. Pretty cool. Uh, fonts, we did a lot of improvements to local fonts. Um, the uploading process, you can read more about that, but it's just going to work more um, as, it, as you would maybe expect. It's going to have drop down for like um, different font weights. And speaking of font weights, now you can actually see the font weights that are uploaded, fonts, local fonts. So you can see here, it like lists each one out. You know, this one only has 400 font weight. This one has 900. You know, this one has, looks like all of them, that kind of thing. So now you can see them really clearly. I think that's pretty cool. Otherwise, there was no way of knowing which font weights were actually uploaded. Moving on to the styles helper. So global color setup. Uh, back here. So basically we added global colors um, and we added this new tab under styles helper just to help you have a, have a clear place to get like, you know, focus and get your colors set up. You can come in here and, you know, set those up. And then of course the hope here in the Divi visual builder is we just wanted to have a place to, to set those up. Now we also added the saved and global options for, for our color pickers, right? So like, for example, right here, you know, if I enable like H1 headings, see here, saved in global, just like in, in Divi. So we did not have that before, 
really nice to be able to use your global colors now in Divi Assistant. And that would apply to like maybe your your styling like the scroll bars like here. Any color picker. See that? You know, back to top button. Uh, we added a link hover color. That was something we'd missed. Oh, this is cool. The drop down for choosing a font. We styled like Divi. And let me just uh, go to one of these maybe. So like right here, for example, that's not it, right here. Um, now you can search. So if I want to like find Poppins, for example, see I can search, see how it's styled really beautiful. The search bar is new. So anyway, <laughs> that was what I was trying to say. The search bar is new and then we styled it also, okay. Um, here's a little option you can read about if for some reason the styles helper is not working. You can add a class now. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Improved. Oh, yeah. Automatically adding the pixel unit. So basically that was a feature request. Like here, I'll show you. Um, it's for heading. Like if I wanted this to be, you know, 36 and I forget to type in um, PX, right? Third, 36 PX. See how it typed it for me. Um, and so you can still do like 3EM or, you know, 5% or whatever, 4%. But um, if you do not do any unit, like if I just say, you know, 40, whoops, I had zero. So if I say 40, 50, whatever, it will type in PX automatically. Just so you don't forget, we had some people forgetting to do that and then it wasn't working because it, was, it wasn't a real value. Okay. Uh, the code helper we we updated this a couple versions back but it's 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 greatly improved now where now you can enable or disable each individual tab in the code helper right so i can just say show css tab show jquery show php um, in the visual builder and lastly this new activate php code this is a setting you can read about it but basically it allows you to disable the code from running like let's say you had an error in your code and you crashed the site or whatever, it won't crash your site. It won't, um, you can actually come into this interface and disable the code um, and then it's still there. You can still see it. Like you could go to the visual builder now and edit it, fix the issue and then come back and activate it again. So it's kind of a cool feature. It's like a, I don't know, like a, not really a safety feature, but like a, a way to like a, to access it even if you have wrong code or you mess something up in your in your PHP. Um, yeah, and then I already talked about that, air handling basically. Um, at some point we also switched these so that the, the code editor, one of these is for draggable height and the other is for minimum height. Originally that was like one setting and it made more sense to think of it as two settings. Accessibility helper, we added options to exclude underlines and buttons and menus. We did various improvements just to the accessibility of Divi. Um, as far as I know, we're at 100%. I shouldn't say that 100% of what I'm aware of. And so if there's something else, we added this new feature also to skip um, the screen. Re um, the, so there's a skip to navigation link for screen readers. And what we've done is if it identifies the screen reader, then it will show it. And if it's not using that, it won't show it kind of thing. Okay. Now for general settings, we added a new admin user access settings. Now this is something that again was requested by a lot of people. Basically think of when you add Divi Assistant to your site, but you have a client or just another user that's an admin. Well, they have full access to Divi Assistant then. But if you don't want that, like you just don't want them to have Divi Assistant, but you want them to be an admin. It's kind of a kind of a tricky situation. So we thought about it, and basically, anything we could think of to do is give you settings, check boxes. <clears throat> now there always have to be one user, of course. But let's say you install it and you set up Divi Assistant, and you don't want the other person to be able to. You simply go into the settings. It's going to be at the top right here, admin settings. Okay, click on that. And then you'll come in there and, you know, un unselect anything here. People you don't want to have access. That is pretty cool because that, that answers a lot of 
of questions and of feature requests from people. I already talked about the green check mark. We had like the spinner GIF thingy and then it would just go away. And then someone pointed out like, There's, it doesn't really have the check mark. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> we need that. Just like Dewey, okay. And then we added the little settings link from the plugin list. Um, the, the, the request, a new feature form is improved. Uh, various things about that. We actually added the global colors as an optional um, export option. And as a little tease, there, were, there will be more options coming here. I'm <clears throat> barely able to talk anymore. Too many features. All right. What's the last thing? So, oh yeah. So some setting logic. Uh, basically before, if you were to actually just turn one of these off. So if you go in here and like, let's say I turn off utility helper, right? Sure, it hides um, the utility helper, okay? But it actually wasn't disabling the settings in the utility helper, which sounds silly, but it wasn't. So now, like let's say you have, see this button, let's say you have this one enabled to put the button in, in the admin bar, but then you go to here and you turn this off. Now it's going to actually turn off any settings in there. The nice thing is, if you turn it back on, those settings values were saved in the database and now they come back on. So that's really cool. Now we do have a full change log that we keep updated. In fact, I would highly recommend checking this because the full change log gives like the little nitty gritty things also, but also you can see what we're working on next. So what I'll actually do, I go in there and like, just for my own reference, sometimes I'll, I'll make a list of what we have completed that's going to be shipped in the next update. So kind of a little heads up there. Um, you'll be able to have some insider information. If you go to that change log, just check, see if we've, we're working on something else, you know, what's coming. It's kind of like a little bit of a roadmap as well. You can kind of see what's coming by what I put there. All right, so yeah, I counted and I counted 112. I counted a couple of times, hopefully I got it right, but somewhere around 112 main features. And that doesn't count each setting, obviously. Like I'm counting just main features. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is, this is a big update, but not everything was in version 1.1 that I covered here. Some of these things were in like 1.0.2 or three or four. And we are already working on a whole bunch of new things. Quite a lot of things um, coming up. And don't worry, it's not like we're going to wait a while to release them. If you check our changelog, you'll actually see that we have been releasing features in every update. 1.0.1, 1.0.2, etc., etc. And sure, 1.1 had more features, but it also is like a milestone where we kind of catch up on the video and the blog post of everything that had been added. So hope you appreciate this. Maybe let me know what's your newest uh, favorite feature that was just released or mentioned in this video. Mention that in the comments, let me know. And of course, let us know new feature ideas. You can send them directly, you know, through Divi Assistant um, or just send an email on our website as well. All right, well, I appreciate um, your patience going through all these things and we'll see you in our next update.